Ms. Tweedy is 47 years old. Yep, 47 years old. She's making between 45 and 60 K in income. She thinks her expenses or her bill, her uh, expenses are 2,500 bucks a month right now. She has 120,000 in her 401k and she wants to retire between 65 and 67. Can we make it work? Hmm, it's interesting. So let's dive into this a little bit, shall we? So we're going to look at old Ms. Tweedy here. Uh, I'm interested by this. So he, and she didn't tell me where her home was. So I'm just saying this. So basically, all I'm doing here is I'm saying she has a house that's worth 150000 bucks. I'm saying it's paid off, but I'm also saying that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm basically saying that her bills are 30000 a year. So that's 2500 bucks a month, all inclusive of all the mortgage, but it's not inclusive of escrow, if that makes sense. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. So we're going to go to cash flow here and we're going to say her, we're going to go over to profile. We're going to say her expenses are pre-retirement living expenses, $2,500 a month. That's her bills, like she said, but she's also going to have a, uh, she's going to have, I'll show you right here. Property tax of three, property tax and insurance of 3000 a year. So that's going to be its own separate line item. That's what you want if you run the software, by the way. All right. So then, so then we're also going to have, um, I think it's here. Uh, yeah. Annual healthcare costs $4,000. That's probably on the high end, but uh, yeah, because she's working right now, what we can probably, yeah, let's do this. What we're going to do because she's single and working, I'm probably going to say her health care. We're going to say half of that uh, for right now because she's single and she's working. So she's going to have probably what's 2166 bucks a month. You know, we'll say 3000 a month. We'll just, I mean, 3000 a year for health care costs while she's working. And then actually, I'm okay with that. Now I think about it. So we got annual health care costs. That, that might be a little bit too much on the front end. On the back end, we got part B, 135. Uh, part D, thirty-five, and uh, uh, Medigap one, you know, one fifty or so. Eh, so what we'll do is we're going to add another box here. We're going to say uh, we're going to say expenses here, and we're going to add a healthcare expense of of oops medical when she is at sixty-seven years old. We're going to say when she turns this age. Yeah, right there, retirement, and we're going to say. Medicare, Oops. Medicare expense. I had to give my arm a rest. And we're going to say monthly expense. Oops. Right there. And we're going to say it's going to go into her end of plan. And we're going to say her monthly expenses, we'll say 350 All right. Um, let's hit that. And we got health inflation. So let's see what that shows because it says uh expense start at retirement but we don't want let's let's see we want that to make sure it's been inflated so bear with me just one second my friends cash flows and expenses at retirement which is 67 we get health care yeah okay good uh, 35 3500 yeah it looks like it's been inflated yeah that's good perfect that's uh been inflated at five percent a year why is that nothing showing up there? Hold on just a second. We're going to profile. We get goals, annual healthcare costs. Yeah, right there. Hmm. Why is that not showing up here? Expenses. Oh, that's retirement. Okay, God. No, 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 no. That's what we want. Her monthly expenses. We want that to be. Uh, so we're going to say her monthly expenses now are 250 That's what we, I got you. Okay, that's what we want right there. 250 and we're going to say until retirement. There we go. That's what we want. So we want to say her medical expenses are two fifty dollars now uh, a month. Yeah, there we go. Health. Okay, until retirement. Good, good, good. That's good. And then what we're going to do is go back to here, and we're going to change that to, uh, we're going to change that to 4000 I like that. Okay, good. So basically what I'm saying is once she hits retirement, she's going to have Medicare B, D, a supplemental policy, and co-pays and co-insurance. In today's dollars, that'd be 4000 and the future dollars would be more than that because inflated at 5% a year. But she still has health care costs today of two fifty dollars a month, I'm saying, is probably her premium. Now, she said her bills are 30000 a year. So I'm probably overshooting this, frankly, because I imagine uh, her bills are 30000 a year. It's all inclusive of everything. But... Let's just see how we're shaking out here. So we, we can mess around with this till we're blue in the face. But 
Yeah, I don't want to. When I do the financial plans with people, I never want to overestimate. I always want to be like a conservative, if that makes sense. I mean, never want to underestimate expenses and overestimate income. I want to be on the conservative side. So let's just look at cash flows. All right, so cash flows are going to go expenses. Yeah, good. House, good, good, good. Perfect. Healthcare, 3000 Housing, 3000 Living expenses, 2500 Good. So our total expenses are 36000 a year, 3000 a month. For that. That's fantastic. Uh, and then we go to her retirement, and it jumps quite a bit there yeah, because then there's Part B, Part D, uh, Medicare supplemental policies, and co-pays and co-insurance. So a pretty significant jump there uh, for sure. And her, uh, and her house, I mean, her, um, uh, her employer isn't paying anything at that point. So it's all Medicare. So, okay. so that, that's one of the benefits of staying at your employer before Medicare is that, you know, they do pay a significant amount of money. And she didn't tell me, I'm just going off what she said. She said 30000 a year is her bills. And I don't know if that includes uh, property tax, homeowners insurance, and health care. So we're going to say it's another 6000 a year. So 3000 a month is what it costs her. All right, so her income, let's go over here. Income inflows are 50,000 a year. She's increasing it by 3% a year. That looks good, fantastic. And then we're gonna go to summary. So she has net outflows because she's saving 5,000 a year. We don't want that. Uh, let's actually, hold on, just go to accounts. And balance addition to accounts. Uh, yeah, so she's putting 5,000, her company's putting uh, 1,500. So let's, because we have, we, we don't want net flows of negative. Uh, so we tell her, look, you need to reduce your 401k. And I had it at 10%. We're going to reduce it to 8% and see what that shows. Boink. We want it to break even as closely as we can. Oops. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Go to cash flows. And we're going to go to cash flows here. Uh, it's still a little bit tight on net flows. I don't like that. So we're going to have to. We got income flows 50, expenses 36,000 because of taxes. You know, tax is what's doing us in. So she's saving 4,000. We're going to have to reduce that because she has too much outflows. And we that's simply just taking on debt. And we, we and what's happened, I'll show you what's happening actually. Uh, she's going to be pulling money. Watch this withdrawals from accounts. Um, she's pulling from a 401k, which we don't want. So we're going to reduce that. Uh, we'll reduce it to 6% then because uh, we don't want her to be pulling money out of her 401k uh, to make cash flow payment. That, that doesn't do us any good at all. So we'll do 6% there. And whatever excess she has will just go into a taxable account. All right. So let's see what we got here. Cash flows. There we go. All right, cool. So here, uh, 54, she still has. Yeah, well, we're going to run with it, see how it shakes out here. Um, the tax payment is a big one. Look at that. Big taxes until she hits about 70, about 81 years old. And it looks like her account's probably exhausted by that point. So she has income flows, 50,000. Other income flows, nothing. Then she hits retirement. She has Social Security. And then she'll start pulling money or RMDs from her R, from her 401k, but it stops at 82 because she's she's she doesn't have any more money. We have her live until she's 92, by 90 as well, by the way. So she's run out of money here at 90 years old on a straight uh, straight line return. So let's see what it looks like from confidence perspective. Yeah, that's not good. So that's when she's run out of money. Yeah, we got so okay. So all right, so let's go back. What we're gonna do? See the tax is what's killing. Look at that, man. I mean, the taxes are eating 20% of her income. Why is that? So let's look at the taxes. I have her living in Georgia. And it, it, this only is going to reflect. When I tell you what, let's look at. Bear with just a second. Let's look at the taxes, cash flows, taxes. It's the FICA, the state tax in Georgia and the Fed. So the FICA is, is actually basically her biggest tax for the most part. Not much she can do about that. State tax is uh, still pretty significant. Feds. Hmm. All right, so let's go to proof. Whatever I was at going, I was going to uh, tax. Just want to look with the federal. Oops. Tax. Whatever we want to do here. 
here. Details. Here's a 2020, $47,000 of income because she's putting in 3,000 to her 401k. Standard deduction, 34,800 of total income, of a uh, taxable income. She has yeah, $4,000 of federal taxes. It's the FICA that eats your eye, man. So, let's see if, what happens if she retires at, we'll say 62. Let's just say if she retires at 62. Yeah, that's just doing good. All right, so let's have her again retiring at full retirement age. Let's see if we, and she's invested, by the way, if you want to know how she's invested, I have her in the Vanguard Total uh, Life Strategy Growth Fund, which is basically a pretty, a, which is a growth of 75, 80% stocks, 20, 25% bonds. So that's a, that's a growth fund. And we're keeping that. And so if she takes Social Security later, it doesn't do much. So if she takes Social Security early, So that's not going to work. All right. So what if we uh, current allocation? All right. So the big thing is this retirement expense. So let's reduce that to two thousand in today's dollars. So we're going to reduce it by five hundred bucks. Let's see what that does. Now that changes very. That changes something pretty good. All right. So you ready? What we're going to do then? Now watch this. Watch this. So right now, Miss Tweety's in the world of her. She's like, ah, that's not going to work, man. But watch. You ready? Net worth. Oh, her home. Interesting. So let's just say she's now 67. She had home is worth 218,000. So let's go to our man Wade Fowles website and see what we could get on a reverse mortgage. I said reverse mortgages. No, no, you did not say that, Josh. How could you? You scam. It's a scam. All right. So we're going to say home appraised value. Got it. Is we're just going to say 200,000. Uh, let's, actually, I guess we'll say two hundred eighteen thousand. Might as well, right? Uh, we're gonna say all that. We're just gonna leave everything Wade put in here. We're gonna leave in there, uh, even though he says try to negotiate a closing costs, all that. We're just gonna leave it all in there, so I don't look like I'm uh, whistling past the graveyard here. So what you can see, monthly insurance premium point five percent on top of the lender's margin on top of the ten year LIBOR. All right, so essentially add all these things together, that's going to be her uh, monthly interest rates was at five, five and a half. All right, uh, she can borrow at the age of 60. We're going to make her age of 67. She can borrow 45% uh, uh, of the house. Did that change over for me? I guess so. Did that? Let's see, six, so let's see, bear me just a second. Let's say, let's say 62. Yeah, okay, there we go. So she at 67, she could borrow 45% against the home. All right, good. So basically a hundred against that uh, hundred bucks, hundred thousand, hundred and ninety thousand dollars. And we are having zero loan origination fee, but we do have other closing costs. So our total closing costs are sixty six hundred, uh, which we're gonna finance into the loan. All right. And so her net available line of credit is 91,000. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a term payment. If so, if she were to take it for 620, and yeah, we wanna do it for a tenure. Tenure is uh, tenure is the monthly and annual amounts available as tenure payments, which lasts as long as the bar uh, remains eligible for the loan. So we're gonna say that's an extra 500 bucks a month that she's going to get from her home. Now we could just do it for term certain of 20 years. I just, you know, for an extra 127 a month where you have, uh, uh, where it's done in 20, I don't like it. So we're just going to, we're going to go over here. We're going to go to profile. We're going to go to income and we're going to add a reverse mortgage income. All right. So we're going to say uh, reverse mortgage. All right. And we're going to say annual amount $6,000. But it's not six thousand dollars because she will get it with inflation, and I think I'm inflating her house at two percent. So we got uh, twenty years left. So six thousand dollars is our present value. And we're gonna get uh, two percent inflation for twenty years. That'll give us uh, eight thousand nine hundred fifteen. Uh, what it'll be at that point eight nine one five. 
So we're inflating the house at 2%, which means we're inflating the, the equity she'll have in her home at 2%, which is what is used to derive how much she can get from her, her uh, line of credit on reverse mortgage. And we're going to start that when she retires. And we're going to end it when she dies. And we're going to increase that by, uh, oh, I guess I'm already doing that. Cool. By 2%, though. Oops. Increase that by and then it's not earned income it's tax-free all right so now we're adding another five hundred dollars a month in today's uh today's dollars did i do that right i get i don't think i actually i didn't do that right because it's going to be 218 in the future dollar. yeah i do need to add it and it does need to be five hundred to six thousand because i was using a future value of the price of the home to get that 500 a month okay gotcha all right good 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 so that's good all right, so now, and that will, was, does that increase? I don't think it does, does it? I don't think these term payments actually increase. So we're gonna and make this a not increase with inflation. We'll say it does not increase with inflation. And we're gonna say she gets that at her retirement. Let's see what it does here. I have no idea. Well, it increases it nicely for sure. Look at that. All right, so here uh, we reduce the expenses by five hundred dollars a month, and we uh, we increase her income by five hundred dollars a month because she has that that other source of income with reverse mortgage. Now she's at a fifty three percent retirement probability. So let's see if we change Social Security. It's a freaking tax that, that FICA tax uh, to sixty four. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, I like seeing that, man. So let's take a look. So, and the, the blue vein never runs out of money. So the blue vein, while it goes down, it's the median is 208,000 at 90. The median is always above zero, significantly above zero. It's well into the six figures. Now, you know, she has a 5% chance uh of have no money, 5% chance of no money. Then she gets up here at 86, she has a 25% yeah, right there, 25% chance of no money. That's a bet I'd be willing to take. I'd be willing to take that bet. Let's see what else we can do. All right, let's go to current allocation. I wonder if we made the, I don't want to make the portfolio more aggressive. It's already aggressive enough. I wonder if you're retired. I'm just, Sixty-eight. That's interesting. So you can see we got to get the fees, the the income, the expenses down because I don't know if I'm using. I'm just she just the thirty thousand dollars in expenses, and I, I don't know if that's thirty thousand dollars all inclusive or not. Let's let's just go back. What we're gonna do. Let's get rid of the, uh, I, look, this is why I think you need reverse mortgage. I mean, my goodness, why would you not access your equity to put food on the table? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. So let's do this. So let's just say she has uh, pre uh, 30,000. That's what she said. And we're going to say it's all inclusive of everything. All right. Cause she, she is what she said. She said 30,000 a year in expenses and bills is what she said. So we're going to say 30,000. Um, and then we're going to go to net worth and we're going to get rid of her property taxes. And we're going to get rid of the, yeah, I did have her house inflating at 2%. All right, so we're going to get rid of her property tax. So now her expenses should be nothing but 30000 a year. Oh, I didn't get rid of the reverse mortgage. Let's see expenses, though. Yeah, sweet, 30000 a year. Got to need to go back to profile. Get rid of that reverse mortgage. Did I hit it? I went to uh, income. Put that down at zero. And we want uh, goals. Yeah, okay, good. 30000 okay. And annual retirement health care costs. Good. When she hits retirement. 
So now when she hits retirement, she'll have 30,000 a year in expenses plus the $4,000 of Medicare Part B, Part D, and uh, Medigap and co-pays and co-insurance. All right, so let's look at this. We just got rid of the reverse mortgage stuff and we're at 99. Yeah, look at that. That's fantastic. So let's do current strategy. Let's do current strategy. So it drops to 62%. That's still pretty good, man. Uh, watch the confidence here. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Again, when she's 86 years old, 87 years old, she has a 25% chance of running out of money. But I, I'd take that, absolutely. And then if we just do a couple things here. Uh, oh, we have a, that was good right here. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so let's just do a couple things here. We're going to say, okay, um, let's take Social Security at 70. What will that do? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's good. Now it does taking Social Security does increase our probability of success by you know almost ten percent from fifty two to uh, to fifty seven. That's actually ten percent increase. It's not five percent increase. It's actually ten percent increase. Five percent above divided into fifty two is basically ten, basically nine. It increases our liquidity when we're dead as well. Um, and then you can see, yeah, I mean that's just that's good stuff. All right, so now what if we made that? 2250. And this is what's amazing me how just um, the contingent on just a couple hundred bucks on each side of the equation is. It's nuts. Yeah, 77%. All right, so that's fantastic. So I'm comfortable with that. If you get, if you get over 65%, I'm very comfortable because I think your expenditures are actually going to drop as you age. All right, so let's look at what we're looking at here. So expenses in retirement for Ms. Tweedy. Uh, so retire, yeah, 47,000. It's actually fifty-seven thousand all told because she has health care kicking in. So she got thirty-five thousand a year, or thirty thousand a year, twenty-five hundred a month of bills, and then ten thousand in health care costs at sixty-seven. So her total expenses are fifty-seven thousand. Let's see what her taxes will be. And I bet they're not going to be that much. Mm, they're still there, right there. Look at that. Because that freaking FICA man. That's what gets you. Jeez. Well, then the Fed's right there. Good night, because she's making more and more money, and the taxes are going up. Anyway, because we're reverting back. By the way, the Trump tax bill only helped the rich. Now, bull crap. The reason our taxes are going up so much is because we're getting the Trump tax bills are ex exhausted. So here, um, she doesn't have any more FICA. So in these three years, she only has $67,398 uh, of taxes. And what we'd want to do then, let's go over here. So what year was that? That was in 2039. And how much did she have in her 401k at that point? Uh, hold on just a second. Her 401k in 2039, uh, she had 500,000 bucks. So what we want to do is we want to do a Roth conversion income. Yeah, here we go. That's going to be sweet. All right, so let's do this. Distribution. And we're going to convert 100,000 bucks. Let's just see what that sucker looks like. Be nice, and I don't know what's going to look like. It'd be interesting, um, and we're going to do it for three years: two thousand thirty-nine to two thousand forty-one. Yeah, we got to check that Roth. You, there we go. Let's see what this guy looks like. So she could pay some pretty good taxes on the front end. Does it help her with the retirement planning, though? All right, it looks pretty good. Ooh. Yeah, oh, we got to go back to this guy. Twenty-five hundred. Let's just keep her social security. Oops. There we go. Let's see what we got. So no, that didn't help her at all in terms of her probability. Cash flows, what it do for taxes. It didn't reduce her taxes as much as wait, did that actually work? Uh it worked. Oh, there it is. Yeah, those three years tax payment, pretty significant. Then it drops, but then it's right back up high again. Okay, no, there you go. All right, sweet. So after a few years, she didn't have any more taxes, but is that because she didn't have any money left over? No, oh, but look at the Roth. Hmm. Yeah, so that 401k is exhausted, but the Roth IRA is still there. Huh. All right, last thing here. We're going to hit... Uh, While she's doing the Roth conversions, let's not take Social Security, eh? 
and current plan. Yeah, so it jumps up to 58% when she does the Roth conversions without taking Social Security until she's 70. And her taxes, when she hits 70, yeah, they drop pretty good. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that's nice. So when they, when she hits 70, she pays 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and then it goes nothing. And it didn't go to nothing because she ran out of money, I don't believe. No, she's still, oh, look at that. Oh, that's a plan right there, man. Take her Social Security at 70, do Roth conversions from basically the day she retires until she's 70. That's, man, that's the freaking cat's me out right there. And uh, and she's still got a pretty good a chance of, of uh, not outliving her money. I know it says only 58%, but let's look at confidence. Oh, yeah, look at that. The, the blue, it gets close to uh, zero. I mean, it's still in six figures by the time she's 90. Uh, but that's I'm willing to take that risk for sure. Oh, that's fantastic. Let's just say we drop this down to 2250. I'm just curious, and we're gonna keep age 70 for Social Security. Let's hit this guy, and we're gonna hit this guy. I bet it's gonna look good. What will happen? Oh, 22,000. Oof, yeah, we don't want that man. We want 20. Oops, 22. There we go. That scared me. Yeah, 76. I'm comfortable with that. I'd say this is fine without question. So here we're taking 2250 at her retirement at 67. She's taking her Social Security at 70. She's doing Roth conversions from 67, 8, oh, 68, 9, 70. And, uh, and watch the tax man. Look at that. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we're talking 6%, 7% because, uh, you know, <laughs> Because she still has money left over in her 401k account. So we can do anything in that regard. We said, no, let's, let's put more into the rod. We do whatever we want. But here's a go to accounts. Um, yeah, look at that. She never, I mean, here's where she's taking money out of her 401k, but she's not, I mean, so her Roth is worth 845000 bucks. So what we'd want to do is say, no, 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 no. Forget that. Let's, you know, when we got to take our RMDs, but we're not going to take, uh, <laughs> I mean, look, withdrawals from accounts. We're not going to withdraw forty-one thousand from a taxable account when our RMD is going to be you know, eight, nine thousand bucks. That's stupid. It would just take it from the Roth, man. But it doesn't let you do that in the software, which drives me crazy, actually. So I'd say, look, once you start getting above your RMD, it's just pull from the Roth. Uh, that, anyway, that's the way to do it. But it won't let you do it in the software. Anyway, there you go, Miss Tweety. Uh, you got some stuff to do here, but you know, if your expenses are truly thirty thousand bucks, you make fifty thousand a year. Uh, you got 120. You're putting away six percent into your 401k, and your company's matching three. Uh, you retire at 67. Take Social Security at 70 with your Roth IRA. Uh, that's been investing aggressively. I mean, you're in, in an 80, 20, 75, 25 stock to bond portfolio. I mean, you're you're freaking golden, in my opinion. And that's not even including, uh, you know, if you say uh, a reverse mortgage, or it's not even including if you make 60, 60 thousand, like you said, it's between 45 and 60. So. Hope this helps. This is a f financial planning that we do here. And, uh, and this is someone who's 47 years old. So that's good stuff. Nah, we'll see you next time.